Armando Hasurigan, Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Hasurigan, please like, and here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including your artworks. You can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. In this video, we're going to look at local anesthetics, and this is sort of an overview on local anesthetics to do with pharmacology. Now, local anesthetics are used in minor surgery to numb a small part of the body. So here you can see uh, some doctor in injecting some local anesthetics into the body to numb the area so we can't feel anything. Interestingly enough, cocaine was one of the first anesthetics. Actually, it was the first anesthetic to be discovered. We can administer anesthetics through intradermal, subcutaneous, or intrathecal in the spine. Before we continue on, please remember the basics of pharmacology. If a drug is in an unionized form, it can penetrate the cell membrane. It is effective. For example, it can be absorbed by the body. However, if a drug is in an ionized form, if it's polar, it cannot penetrate the cell membrane. It's not very effective. And for example, it cannot be absorbed by the body. Now, a local anesthetic is a weak base with a pKa of about 8 and 9. And in an unionized form, it can penetrate the cell membrane. It is quite effective. However, if when it enters a physiological pH, which is slightly acidic, below 7, it will become ionized. And so it cannot penetrate the cell membrane. So for example, if we were to administer a local anesthetic to a person suffering from high levels of acids in their body, the local anesthetic will be ionized very quickly and so is not very effective. So this is an important concept to know and we'll, and we'll learn more about it uh, during this video. So how do local anesthetics work? Well, they numb a small part of the body by particularly working on the nerves especially the afferent nerve fibers, the pain fibers, by preventing the pain fibers to send pain signals to the brain. Let's have a closer look. Here is the cell membrane of the neuron with channels. Here is the outside of the neuron, and here is the inside. The inside is not meant to be here, it's meant to be in the inside. I hope you understand that. In the inside of the neuron, it's more negatively charged in respect to the outside. In the inside, we have more potassium ions, and in the outside, we have more sodium ions. When an action potential or impulse travels through along the neuron, the inside will become more positive, like so, because of the influx of sodium ions from the outside to the inside. What happens when a local anesthetic comes along? A local anesthetic will come along in an unionized form, meaning that it can penetrate the cell membrane. So here, the local anesthetic will penetrate the cell membrane and come inside the neuron. The inside of the neuron is slightly acidic in the physiological pH. And so when this local anesthetic goes inside the neuron, it will become ionized and so will not leave this, the neuron. And this is what we want because then the local anesthetic in an, un, in an ionized form can bind on the sodium channels here and essentially prevent the sodium ions from coming inside the neuron and so prevent the impulse or action potential from propagating down along the neuron. So, in summary, a local anesthetic essentially prevents both the generation and conduction of the nerve action potential. It blocks the sodium channels by physically plugging the transmembrane pore from the inside. And so when we prevent the, uh, the conduction of this action potential from this pain fiber, that means that the brain will not receive this pain signal and so we would, we would feel no pain when we use local anesthetics. 
However, local anesthetics actually work on every type of nerve, not only these afferent nerve fibers, the pain fibers. But as a general rule, they work more on small fibers because small fibers are more susceptible than large fibers. And local anesthetics also work particularly on myelinated more than unmyelinated nerve fibers. So if we draw this up uh, from the most susceptible to the least susceptible, is that nociceptors, the pain fibers, are more susceptible uh, to local anesthetics. And then we have the sympathetic fibers, the temperature fibers, and, and so on and so on, until finally on motor fibers. But we would need a massive dose of local anesthetic to paralyze a person. As a side note, let's uh, look at another type of local anesthetic, a natural one, uh, which is uh, secreted by pufferfish, and it's a toxin. So here again, I'm drawing a, the membrane of a neuron, and with the channel, the inside is more negative in respect to the outside, but when an action potential comes along, the inside will become more positive. The pufferfish, as we know, is pretty toxic for humans. And that is why we stay away from it. The pufferfish, this is because the pufferfish secretes a toxin known as tetrodotoxin, or TTX. TTX, unlike our local anesthetic that we use in hospital, TTX blocks the sodium channel from the outside, like so. And so, this will not allow sodium ions to come inside, and so will not allow the action potential to pass through. The side effects of using local anesthetic include headache, dizziness, confusion, and CNS depression, which may be fatal if it leads to respiratory depression. However, cocaine actually doesn't cause CNS depression, but causes uh, excitement instead. So that's cocaine. Side effects of local anesthetic also affect the heart. It can lead to myocardial depression, vasodilation as well. And so care must be taken. We have to check the blood pressure before giving local anesthetic. Cocaine, again, on the other hand, doesn't cause myocardial depression, but increases like the activity. Now let's look at some types of local anesthetics, some popular ones. Lignocaine, also called lidocaine in America, is has a rapid induction, has a medium duration, so you won't feel pain for medium duration, has good tissue penetration, and it's very commonly used, especially in dentistry, I think. But lignocaine also works as an antiarrhythmic drug, a class 1B. So this lignocaine can be a local anesthetic as well as an antiarrhythmic drug. As an antiarrhythmic drug, it tries to... Um, fix, not fix, but tries to help uh, in arrhythmias. So it works on the depolarization phase, rapid depolarization phase of the ventricles. So if this was the normal action potential of a ventricle myocyte, where we, in the zero phase, we have a rapid depolarization caused by an increase in sodium influx, lignocaine will cause this type of shift which will essentially de slow down the depolarization phase. But we don't really need to know that lignocaine is a antiarrhythmic drug because this is a local anesthetic video. But that's just a good concept to understand. Another type of local anesthetic is procaine, which is, I wrote here, crap because it has many side effects and it's not very useful. And the last local anesthetic I'll talk about is bupivacaine. It has a slow onset, a long duration, and medium tissue penetration, so it's pretty good. And that is why it is commonly used in long surgeries, because of this long duration. However, it has high cardiotoxicity, so care must be taken when using this with people suffering from uh, myo uh, heart failure or something like that. I hope you enjoyed this video on local anesthetic. It was very brief, but please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.